somebody recently came to me and said, Pastor Jen, how can we live in this world and know how broken and painful and wrong so many things are and still find joy? How can we possibly, and this, this was a, a young person and the question really touched the center of my soul. Once you really see, they said, once you see the injustice, how can you possibly live in a world that is this broken? And I invite us to consider as we explore this topic of joy, sometimes we think of joy as just a mind shift to be positive and ignore everything else. That's not God's joy. You just heard those Isaiah passages. God is acutely aware of what needs to be restored, of the places in your life where you are mourning, of the places where your spirit is faint and you need to be given a mantle of praise. God is aware of the places where there is injustice and brokenness and God is at work in this world through you and others that there would be restoration as God intends. And so how do we hold in tension the injustice and suffering that we can see with eyes of faith, the call to live in justice, and the desire to find joy that we would not give up? Reverend Dar Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., one of the things that makes me crazy about this weekend is that we quote about three quotes. He was an extraordinary theologian with a depth and a richness to his understanding of how life literally called us forth. When I was young, it was his book, Strength to Love. I read it so many times, the cover fell off. That was fundamental in my understanding of what God was calling me to do. Dr. Martin Luther King says, this faith that we have can give us courage to face the uncertainties of the future. It will give our tired feet more strength as we continue our forward stride towards the city of freedom. Dr. Martin Luther King was by no means a perfect man. Let's be clear. But Dr. Martin Luther King had an understanding that the faith of his fathers and mothers, that this Jewish Christian faith that we stand in has a legacy of living into the call of justice and that this very faith we have can give us courage to face the uncertainties of the future. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, do not be anxious about anything, even when they bomb your house, even when they do all kinds of crazy things, do not be anxious. In all things, present your needs, your supplications, your thanksgiving before God, and God who is able <laughs> will give you a peace that passes all understanding. Vanessa Gracia Cruz suggests that our propensity to live in anxiety and stress, and I believe COVID has blown this wide open, right? We are a community that is anxious and stressed. And all we need to do is look at our young folk to understand how real it is. I am not the pastor who stands up here to tell you, just pray it away. No, I understand how real anxiety is but I also understand how real the God we serve is. And so, so part of, I, I understand the, this, faith that can, this faith that can give us courage, and I understand the racism and the, the institutional injustice that King and others were up against. And so the call is give it over to God. Vanessa Gracia Cruz says part of why anxieties and stresses build up within us is because you and I look out at this world that is so deeply broken or on a really hard day we look at our calendar, forget about broken, we just look at all that has to happen and we think God, I can't do it. And even if we don't say it to God, something within us stirs, it's too much, I can't do it. It's too big, I can't face it. It's too long existing, as if God didn't know when the prophet Isaiah was speaking how deeply entrenched injustice is in a sinful society. 
And still God says, when you're anxious and, and you're stressed, when you're anxious and you're stressed, choose to go before God and say, I can't do it alone. I cannot do it alone. Vanessa Grasha Cruz, one of the things I really appreciate about her writing is that she says very explicitly and clearly that she was called to write this book on joy in a moment in her life that she was struggling deeply. She had had miscarriage after miscarriage and she wanted to carry a child. And her mother who had been influential in her life had died. And she says, even though it felt like I didn't have a choice, like the anxiety came like a wave, I started to take that scripture and repeat it as a mantra. Take it to God. Allow God in every situation, by prayer and petition, present your request to God. Allow God to be the one to help you carry. And I'm convinced that any person any person who has really allowed the Spirit of God to change them first had to open that God would actually help them. God, I can't do it alone. And I don't call on you just in the moments when I'm desperate. I want you to be beside me in all of it. I want you to be the God that walks with me. I do not want to be anxious about anything, but in everything by God, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, I want to make my request known to you, and I want this peace of yours, God, which surpasses all understanding, to guard my heart and my mind. I was recently talking with my husband, Edgar, about just how stressful these seasons have been. And he said, Jen, have we ever talked openly about how important it is to take it to God? A thousand other resources we lay before our children. Do we lay that one too? Talk to him. Lay it before God. I can hear your voice, but I can't hold it like God can. I used to repeat to my children when they were little, and I swear it was more for me than it was for them. I love you with all my heart all the time, in any circumstance, no matter what, and God loves you more. I thought that they would remember that the rest of their life. They don't even remember it, right? I wanted that to be like this legacy. They don't even remember it, but I do. Because I needed to be reminded over and over and over again that God is more. God's love is more. God is more than what I can hold. The second thing that Vanessa Grasha Cruz really invites us to consider is that there is extraordinary power in believing that God will not abandon us. If you think about every movement for justice, if you think about every immigrant family crossing a border in a desert, if you think about every time that race in such a way that it felt like there was no justice to be had, if you think about every moment where somebody felt like they had the last word, where the poor were trampled again and again, <laughs> there's the long arc of history, and there is the God that will not abandon. Justice may not be served in this moment, but God is faithful. It may not be seen right this moment, but God will not leave me. God will not abandon me. And if you look at that Acts 21, 26 to 28, therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope for you will not abandon my soul to Hades. It is always remarkable to me that Christianity was introduced to the enslaved communities in this country as a way to keep them down. Go ahead and you worship here. And when you worship this God, then you won't be focused on what you need to do to rise up against the injustice before you, but God is bigger. (laughs) And that became the, the place out of which an extraordinary struggle. Dr. Martin Luther King is part of a legacy. He is one person who got pushed to the front, but there was a community that walked in extraordinary faith. And not just a faith that began in this nation. It was indeed the prophet Isaiah and Jesus quoting Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. 
He sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, but the church should not be political. I'm not suggesting choosing a party. I'm suggesting that we have a profound call to live in the transformative justice of God, to bind up the brokenhearted when somebody grieves before you and you hold their hand and you walk with them. <laughs> it is part of the beloved community that God calls to proclaim liberty to the captives because sometimes just to say that somebody has the right to, to freedom <laughs> Is, a, is an important step in that coming to pass. Release to the prisoners, proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor, comfort to all who mourn. I invite us to consider the ways in which scripture puts grief and mourning together with oppression and injustice, because God desires that anything that squelches the spirit that God has placed within us to be released, that we may live into this peace that passes all understanding. Vanessa Grasha Cruz, and I've never seen somebody quote that Acts 21. You will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. God will not leave you or me. God will not leave any community that is facing injustice. They will not stay there because God is faithful. <laughs> Whether we get on board with it or not, God is faithful. And in that process, we will start to see the ways of life. And then the gladness of God's presence. Dr. Martin Luther King said, courage is an inner resolution to go forward despite obstacles. Vanessa Gracia Cruz and Tommy Newberry say joy is a choice because we choose to grab hold of a God who is not finished with us or with this world. I wanna end by talking about the way in which justice and joy bring us to community. Sometimes we, we think this journey is about our freedom alone, our freedom from anxiety, our freedom from grief, our freedom from injustice. But God is always talking to us in the collective. That Isaiah 49 passage is literally God talking about how the call on each one of our lives is part of the movement to the freedom of the community. You and I, as we seek our freedom, are part of God freeing the community. Martin Luther King said, when I am commanded to love, I am commanded to restore community, to resist injustice, and to meet the needs of my brothers. He meant his sisters too, right? Our call is to restore community because the joy is not just for me, it is for the fullness of the body of Christ. Because just as I can't do it alone, just as I need the community to worship with me, I need this beloved community. Today, Epworth, we are called to live in joy, but we are called to understand that it is a joy that doesn't come from ignoring injustice, but rather it is a chosen joy, a chosen courage, despite all obstacles, an openness to see what is broken, and a belief that God is a God of restoration. For your heart, for my heart, for this community, and for this world. Amen. The splendor of the King Rose in Tries to hide and trembles at his voice.